Good morning, Year 7. It's Mr. Sutton here. I hope you had a really good Easter break and welcome back. Uh, now, as promised, uh, you should be getting this through Microsoft Teams. And also, as promised, uh, we're going to put a hold on the previous project that we started when we were still back in school. And what we're going to have a look at is something that I'm hoping will get you out into the garden and also being a bit practical. Um, obviously, we don't all have a workshop. We don't all have a big range of tools. So what I've had to do is trying to come up with a project that hopefully will give you something to have a look at um, and it's going to be this which is the bug house or bug hotel now you might be thinking what's a bug hotel well as I had up previously you can see these are indeed bug hotels now the idea of a bug hotel as you can just see, we've got a lovely one here from the Woodlands Trust. A bug hotel is something which encourages creepy crawlies to be in our garden. And some of you might be thinking, ooh, why the hell do I want to encourage creepy crawlies to be inside my garden? Well, the simple reason is that beneficial insects are absolutely crucial to what we do and, and to keeping our planet safe and you know, secure because beneficial insects do a lot of good in our garden. I'm not going to go into loads and loads of depth here, but you can see here with the Woodland Trust, and it's a really good website. Um, what I'll do is I'll stick this in the Microsoft Teams one as well for your assignment. But it explains a bit about a bug hotel. So you can see here, we've got here this explanation. If you have some bricks, wooden boxes or pallets to hand, why not build a multi-story mini beast mansion and treat your guests to some five-star accommodation. Divide it into sections and stuff for each part with different natural materials, dry leaves, twigs, hollow stems, dead grass, pine cones, bits of bark are all ideal. And you can see that they've created this, which is quite a magnificent one. Now I'm quite lucky that I have a nice garden and I live um, at the edge of some countryside. Some of you may not have the same sort of level of space outside, but any small little space can be really, really good for encouraging some of those sort of beneficial insects. Now you might be asking, what is a beneficial insect? Well, what I've done is I've put together um, a whole range of videos that we'll be using. But in particular, I'm gonna be looking at these 10 beneficial insects because insects do a lot of good. They do some major, major things which are really important to us and keeping our food going. For example, as you will see in this one, bees will pollinate plants. And what that means is it takes the pollen from one plant to another, allowing it to fertilize it and it actually to produce fruit. So for example, just about every single fruit tree, certainly apples and other things like that, have blossom at this time of year or may have just gone over actually, and the bees will be going from one plant to another and that causes cross-pollinization and means that the plants can actually grow fruit. Without things like bees and other pollinating insects, we wouldn't have a food supply. The other thing is, I mean, we've got lovely ladybirds just here, but ladybirds are often called the lion of the garden because they're quite ferocious. They eat lots of animals, little insects that will eat our plants. So for example, a ladybird, actually will eat, and I'll bring up a ladybird on here, or ladybug, or ladybird beetle, as we've got here, um, these will go along and they will actually eat, kill and eat aphids. Now aphids are green fly and other types of things, and they will eat them and stop them from multiplying and eating our plants. So they're known as a beneficial insect, so they're really, really important to encourage in our gardens. And you've also got other things as well, which we, so we've got, first of all, that they can kill off pests, they pollinate, but they also provide some wonderful um, sites for us and get us in touch with nature. Because if you think about a butterflies um, and how they come out, yes, obviously you have the caterpillars that we have, first of all, that turn into butterflies and they obviously can eat plants but if you manage it really really well these can a pollinate as well but b they can be a fantastic resource of color and imagination and bringing a bit of nature into our gardens and at the moment i think if you're lucky enough to have a garden or even if you just got a little bit of space maybe in a park or somewhere where you can go and enjoy these types of insects it really does help us feel a bit better as a lot of us are feeling very very cooped up at the moment 
So what are we going to do? Well, I've asked you to have a look through this PowerPoint. And in this PowerPoint, I go over a number of different bits and pieces about sustainability, the six R's, and why we actually want these different insects and some ideas I've done on Google SketchUp, which show you some basic ideas about how to create a boat hotel in your garden. But we're going to move on to this. Now attached to the actual um, Microsoft Teams assignment is this sheet that I've created to you. And it gives you a basically a first task breakdown. And it asks you to mind map out about different types of insects, beneficial insects that is, construction materials, that is what you could possibly make your building out of. So that will be very personal to you. Maybe you could have a quick look around the garden, um, see what you've got there, what things you think might be really good for them. And then finally this one, and this one's a bit, a bit harder and might need a little bit of research. For these different insects, they have different requirements because a bug hotel needs to actually attract the right types of bugs. Now what attracts a ladybird is not going to be the same thing that attracts, say, a bee. They're going to want different requirements and different things built into their bug hotels. So if we have a look at the one on the how to build one just here, there's a whole range of different materials in here and different animals want to go to different things. So for example, up the top here, that would be quite good for areas for spiders. Yes, I know people don't like them, but they are very, very beneficial um, to be at the top here. But beetles and other things wouldn't be able to get up to the top because they need to be more at this ground level. So these bricks in here and this scrap wood would be good for beetles. So it depends on what you want to attract and how you actually design it. So I want you to go through and think about that one, putting nesting materials here, maybe even do some little drawings, add some color onto it, and you can upload it. Now there's different ways you can do this. I've formatted this PowerPoint so it can be printed out in A4, and I've done this single page so that you can print it out. You could then scan or take a photograph and upload your results so I can have a look at it. Alternatively, you can obviously add directly to this PowerPoint and upload it for me to have a look at as well. On the right hand side, we've got the second task, and that is the social, moral and environmental. And as I put here, we all have a duty of care for the environment. But why do you think we need to encourage insects and bugs to enter our garden? Use your own knowledge and the internet to research two reasons why we should use, uh, why we should. And I put down there, use PEE paragraphs. So not a simple sort of thing, it's gotta be a good solid paragraph where you state things and then give your reasons for it. Put those into there, or you can always cut and paste this and put it on a second slide. Remember, I'm only interested in you taking these tasks. You can always move this onto a second slide if you want a bit more space. It's up to you. The beauty of us working from home and you using your own IT is you can decide how you do it. I just need to make sure that I've got these three areas on the mind map and then we've got these. You can, if you don't have a printer as well, by all means you can just to do the mind map on a separate piece of paper as long as it's got these headings. Do it by hand, pencil, pen, drawing, fantastic. And the same with this. It can be a bit on lined paper. As long as you take a photograph and upload it, I will be able to mark it. So that's it everyone, hope that's really good and obviously what we're going to do is look a little bit more into the environmental issues and things that we need to be thinking about and I think that's really important at times like this when I think we're very aware it's spring and we're very aware as well of our, how the environment is influencing us at these difficult times. But thank you for listening, hope that works out okay, any problems then drop me a comment and I'll get back to you. Well done everyone, speak to you soon, take care, bye.